Welcome to Flow State, a podcast designed to help you focus. And I'm your host, Bobby Light, here to provide the soundtrack to your work. You're listening to the talk only version of Flow State. In this version, I've removed the music so you can re-listen to or share a specific topic I've discussed. Eventually, I may even expand on the topics with longer talk-only episodes, discussing deep work, neurology, peak performance, and of course, the science of flow. Enjoy! The more I learn about working memory, the more I'm convinced that the misuse of working memory is what leads to burnout, stress, and feelings of overwhelm. I've seen many people discuss ways to increase working memory, but I actually think that's unnecessary, and it's better to simply use the working memory we already have. So what is working memory? It's a crucial aspect of our cognitive system, allowing us to hold and manipulate visual and auditory information in our mind for short periods of time. We can think of working memory like your kitchen counter. When you cook a meal, you place the ingredients and tools you need to prepare the meal on the counter. You use your hands to manipulate the items to produce a meal. The key point here is, Just like your working memory, you only have one kitchen counter, and it has limited space. With this limited space, it makes sense to prepare one meal at a time. It wouldn't make sense to cook meatloaf and mashed potatoes while at the same time also baking pie and cookies. Well, you could, but neither of these dishes would be any good. Unfortunately, this is what I find myself and many of us doing with our working memory. Our environment pushes us to multitask when really what's happening is we're task switching. We're clearing out the kitchen counter as we switch from task A to task B to C and back and forth. We are clearing and reloading our kitchen counter constantly. Not only is this causing us to perform slower, but we make more mistakes, forget most of what we've done, and lack any sense of real creativity with each task. The types of tasks do make a difference. As Scott H. Young mentions in his guide to working memory, what matters is whether the two tasks employ the same cognitive processes. For instance, when you're watching TV while reading your study notes. Doing these two activities simultaneously is going to interfere with your comprehension as both of these activities compete for access to your phonological loop. The phonological loop refers to the auditory information your working memory can hold. So yes, it does matter what two tasks you're trying to perform at the same time. Going back to our example, it's probably pretty reasonable to roast vegetables while baking chicken at the same time. For me, as a software engineer, I know firsthand the harmful cost of switching between writing code and responding to email, Slack, or attending meetings. All of these tasks are so incredibly different, each requiring the full capacity of my working memory. By switching between them often, I constantly lost hours of valuable output and creative insight. This is why companies that poorly understand this concept have their engineers, designers, and other creatives working late at night and on weekends because they haven't built systems to give their creative employees the space they need to utilize their working memory effectively. What's even more concerning is that once we've been trained to task switch by the outer world, we develop the habit of self-interruption from within. The habit of self-interruption has taken hold. 
And then at the end of the day, we wonder why we feel like everything took twice as long and why we feel exhausted. By constantly switching, we block ourselves off from ultimately reaching flow state, where our peak performance lies dormant, waiting for us to just give it a chance, for us to slow down and focus on one finite thing at a time. Improving our use of working memory is not only about focusing on one finite thing at a time, but also how we creatively organize and absorb information. Let me give you an example that involves your participation, if you would indulge me. Memorize these letters for me. Z-E-R-I-M-N-N. M A O O T I. How many letters did you remember? How many would you remember tomorrow? Probably not many. Well, how many letters would you remember if I had told you that those letters, when rearranged, spell the word memorization? All of them, right? Why? Because we've now organized those letters into a single chunk of data that's easier for your working memory to hold and manipulate. Just think of our kitchen counter analogy. It's not just about cooking one meal at a time, but how well we organize the ingredients and tools on to our kitchen counter. Similarly, how can we creatively use our working memory to our advantage? The use of chunks of information, diagrams, and stories are a few examples of how we can use our working memory to solve complex problems, manage large organizations, and process new ideas more effectively. Richard Feynman, the famous theoretical physicist, is renowned for his creative use of working memory. What sets Feynman apart was how he approached complex problems. He developed his own system of diagrams, now famously known as the Feynman diagrams, which allowed him to visualize and solve quantum mechanical problems in a new way. These diagrams helped Feynman and his colleagues understand the interactions between particles in a concise manner that would not overload working memory. His creative use of working memory extended beyond the realm of theoretical physics as he became known for his ability to crack safes containing classified documents, a hobby he developed to relieve boredom. He would memorize patterns, lock configurations, and other details using his working memory to systematically deduce combinations. Learning about this has honestly inspired me to rethink how I approach various aspects of my life. For example, as I grow the flow state platform, I sometimes find myself overwhelmed with the many things I have to think about, each requiring a different demand on working memory. But I'm reminded here that I have more work to do in organizing this information in creative ways to make this easier for myself? How can I develop systems that make it easier to process all the moving parts of my business, just like the word memorization made it easier to remember those letters? How are you using or misusing your working memory? Are you task switching too often? Or are there creative uses of visual and auditory aids or even stories you can employ to improve your ability to learn, coordinate, and solve problems. Thanks for listening today. I hope you got a lot done, and I hope you got to practice effective use of your working memory. Until next time, keep on flowing.